Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. Check out this recording I did. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how I used polar patterns to achieve this level of isolation between the vocals and the guitar. And I was begging you to go. Oh, I was begging you to go. And I was begging you to go. Oh, I was begging you to go. Understanding microphone polar patterns is really important in optimizing the sound that you're going to get. For instance, in a live environment, you can use polar patterns to help prevent feedback. Or in studio applications, you can use the polar patterns to get excellent isolation between parts, such as the example I just showed between vocals and guitar, or even creatively use them to pick up more than one part at the same time to capture more of the room, less of the room, or just use them as another tool in your toolbox to help sculpt the sound that you're going for. Microphone polar patterns are the directionality that the microphone picks up sound from. You know how some flashlights, you can focus the beam or have the beam spread out more? Well, microphones can be focused in what direction they pick up sound from, or it can be spread out more. And also the polar pattern determines from which direction the microphone has the best rejection of sound. And this is important because, say in a live situation, you want to get good rejection of the audience and pick up the vocalist as much as possible, but you want that microphone to also get good rejection of the sound coming from the speakers, which usually comes from the sides. And also in the studio, like for instance a snare microphone, you want that to get good rejection of the toms and pick up the snare as much as possible. Now there's three main polar patterns that a microphone can have. Omnidirectional, cardioid, and figure eight. There's other polar patterns as well, but the other ones will be a variation that sits somewhere in between two of those main polar patterns, such as hypercardioid, that's in between cardioid and figure eight. So the omnidirectional polar pattern basically picks up sound from all directions evenly. So that's good in a few different situations, such as when you want to capture more of the sound of the room, or if you don't know which direction something is, you just need to hang a mic from the ceiling and the source might move around, or if there's several sources all within a room and you don't want to be able to just have the microphone point at one of them, you want it to capture everything evenly. So omnidirectional is great for that. A cardioid polar pickup pattern focuses its pickup in just one direction and has rejection of sound from the other direction. The cardioid pickup pattern is probably the one that's most commonly used within a recording studio for recording most things such as acoustic instruments and vocals. And the figure eight polar pickup pattern basically picks up sound evenly from the front of the microphone and the back of the microphone, but it rejects sound coming from the side. Out of the three main polar patterns, figure eight has the tightest focus of direction that it picks up sound from, which also means there's a wider area that it doesn't pick up sound from, and in that wider area, it's got the best rejection of sound from that direction. So to explain how the focus kind of works, let's start with omnidirectional, where it picks up sound from all directions evenly. There's no focus at all. But then gradually you can move towards cardioid, where it picks up sound from just one direction. And then from cardioid, you can focus it even more and pick up sound from a very specific direction, but as it becomes more focused, it picks up sound from behind it as well, until it gets all the way to figure eight, where it picks up sound evenly in the front and back, and has very good rejection of the sound from the sides. Now as the polar pattern becomes more focused into one direction, there's another phenomenon that happens and that's called proximity effect. The proximity effect is where a microphone will pick up more bass the closer the source is to the microphone. And this goes hand in hand with the polar pattern. The tighter the area of focus is, the greater the proximity effect will be. Right here I have an ISK 2B Beauty. This is a multi-pattern condenser microphone. By multi-pattern, what that means is I can change the polar pickup pattern right here on this dial. So let's take a listen to some of the different polar patterns and how they sound. We'll start with omnidirectional. Check, check, one, two, three. Check, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, three. Check, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, three. Check, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, three. See, as you can see, as I spin the microphone, there's not too much of a difference in the sound. And if I go closer or farther, there's not much of a difference in the bass response. I'll be adjusting the volume so that the volume is relatively even and you can focus on the change in tone rather than the change in volume. Check one, two, three. 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 Check one. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. Now I'm going to go to the cardioid polar pattern. Check one, two, three. This is the front of the microphone. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. This is the back of the microphone. Check one, two, three. 
Check one, two, three. This is 90 degrees to the side of the microphone. Check one, two, three. 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 And I'm going to go closer and farther. Again, I'm going to adjust the volume so that you can focus on the tone rather than the volume change. Check one, two, three. 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 So now I'm going to go to the hypercardioid pattern, which is in between cardioid and figure eight. So you still get sound pickup from both directions, the front and the back, except it picks up sound more from the front than the back, and it has the best rejection at 270 degrees. Check one, two, check one, two. This is hypercardioid. Check one, two from the front. Check one, two. This is from the side. Check one, two. Check one, two. This is at 270 degrees. Check one, two. This is directly from the rear of the microphone. Check one, two. Check one, two. And then keep spinning it. This is 270 again. Check one, two. Check one, two. This should have decent rejection. And this is 90 degrees. And from the front, check one, two. And now to show you the proximity effect, Check one two, 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 check one two. And now I'll go to the figure eight polar pattern. Check one two, this is directly in front of the microphone. Check one two, check one two. Now we're at 90 degrees to the side. This should have the best rejection. Check one two, now we're spinning it. Check one two, now this is the rear of the microphone. Check one two, check one two. Keep spinning it. Check one two, check one two. Now we're at 90 degrees to the side. This should offer the best rejection. Check one two, check one two. I'm gonna keep spinning it, keep spinning it. Check one two, now this is the front of the microphone again. So now I'm gonna show you the proximity effect. And again, I'll be adjusting the volume so that you can focus on the change in tone without it being affected by the changes of volume. Check one two, 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 check one two. Now some microphones have a fixed polar pickup pattern, such as the ISK vibrato, which is fixed cardioid, and some microphones have several polar pickup patterns that they're capable of, and you can select which one you want to choose, such as the ISK 2B Beauty, where you use this selector switch to choose which one you want. And here's the ISK Little Gem, and it has interchangeable capsules for different polar patterns. And the capsules are really easy to change. You just twist them off and put the new capsule on. So here's the hypercardioid capsule. Boom, and it's that easy. And actually the microphone you're hearing me through right now is an ISK Little Gem. It's this one right here, and it's got the hypercardioid capsule on it. Now the reason I chose the hypercardioid capsule for this application is because I'm a little bit farther away, so I want that tighter directional focus. And yeah, it does pick up sound from behind it a little bit, but that's the trade-off that I had to make. The little gem with the hypercardioid capsule is probably my favorite microphone to use in a live application because it focuses in on the sound in front of it and has excellent rejection of feedback. I also like using them on drums as a hi-hat microphone because they focus in on the hi-hat right in front of it and have good rejection of the rest of the drum kit. And yeah, sure, they pick up a little bit of sound from right behind the microphone, but there's nothing back there. There's no drum kit. There's no sound sources back there, so I'm not worried about it. I like using the ISK2B Beauty with the figure eight polar pickup pattern when I'm recording a vocalist who plays guitar and it's a live performance in the studio because that figure eight has excellent rejection off to the side so I can really isolate on the voice and get good isolation of the guitar. The guitar mic is the blue one. It's a figure eight polar pattern and it's positioned so the front aims at the guitar and 90 degrees off axis where it has best rejection is aimed at the vocalist's mouth. The vocal mic is the red one. It's a figure eight polar pattern and positioned so the front aims at the vocalist's mouth and 90 degrees off axis where it has the best rejection is aimed towards the guitar. And I was begging you to go. Oh, I was begging you to go. And I was begging you to go. Oh, I was begging you to go. To get a good sounding recording in this situation, it's really important to get good isolation. Check out lesson 9 on phase where I explain why that bleed between the microphones can ruin the recording. You can go to iskrecording.com and download the raw tracks to this song so that you can hear it more closely and also do your own mix practice. You might want to consider subscribing to this channel because I'm going to be doing a ton more videos showing you how to get awesome sound quality at the lowest possible price. So I'll see you in the next video.